Hi. Hey. I am flattered, but I do not have a teeth. I'm sorry. Oh, oh Grammy sucks. Oh. Can you see his forehead, like here? And look at this one. <laughs> He's so delicate. Are you sure you're a boy? Can you be a girl? Oh, let me see. No, you can't be a girl. All right, go find your mama. I'm your Grammy, but I have no milk, okay? <laughs> no milk for my boys. I'm so sorry, I know. I wish I could give you milk. But they know. give it's you pot. I wanted to call him mint. Mint? What? But he has no green. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to throw you like that, my boy. <laughs> you can go find your mom. Go find the teeth. I'm gonna bring stuff for Mocha. She's probably hungry. I'm thirsty and exhausted. I mean, on part two of this series, where I'm gonna share with you why I think like I'm not capable of keeping goats and all my doubts and all my anxiety in this time of transition. Today, we're gonna talk about a mistake I made with Mocha. And this is again based on my experience with my goats and the way I do things. But I hope that you can take something out of this video and maybe it's just keep an eye on your goats, get to know their behaviors, and hopefully this will help you understand that sometimes, despite the fact that a goat can be a great mom, there are some things that you still have to watch and why I feel like I did everything wrong with Mocha squads. I feel like I slacked, I feel like I didn't do enough in the beginning and now I'm starting to see the consequences of not doing the things I know I have to do as soon as they're born. So if you're interested in some of that information, please stay tuned. Okay. So Mocha's quads were born on Tuesday, so 2019, 18, 17, the 17th of May. I was already kind of worried, not sleeping well at night, keeping an eye on her. If you miss all those videos, I'll have them linked down below. But the idea was that she was not um, showing any kind of signs that she was going to go into labor. So I talked to the vet a couple of times actually and I share one of those times with you when she explained that sometimes their eggs are released after the breeding which means that those babies are conceived not exactly on the date that the buck was, ex well the doe was exposed to the buck. Anyways, watch that video if you're interested. So I was already kind of struggling with her not having the quads. I was leaving on Friday and she you know, by Monday she was still not having any babies and I thought, what am I going to do? Uh, my son, my youngest son said, mom, just go do your thing and if she goes into labor, I'll help her. And I thought, oh my gosh, I mean, what if something goes wrong? What if she gives birth to these babies but there's one breach or there's, you know, it, it... so I was really stressing out and that's why I had to call the vet twice. So after that, on Tuesday, she delivered the, the quads. By then, I was falling asleep in the pen, exhausted. If you haven't watched that video, if you want to watch it, I'll put it on the top of the screen so you can check it out. But just so you know, um, she had the quads, and I was in go, 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 go mode. I dipped their umbilical cords, and I didn't weigh them. I knew that the two black ones were kind of smaller and the two silver ones were kind of bigger. But that's pretty much it. I didn't weigh them. I didn't do probiotics. I didn't do anything else because they seem okay. They were a good size and, you know, labor was went well. And so I didn't do what I usually do for every single baby goat that is born in our farm. Now, fast forward to today, I let mocha out with the babies a week from when they were born which when they have twins 
I do that when they had a single one I did that but when Clara had the quads I kept her with her baby for a couple with their with her babies for a couple of weeks until you know they started peeing and pooping so much that that was such a small space for five goats even four of them being babies so they were born I think on the 22nd and they stay for about I don't know if it was two weeks, but about 10 days in the pen with mom, being nursing all day long and sleeping because they're babies. They want to eat and sleep. Now with Mocha, I didn't do the 10 days. I let her out. And now I'm seeing the signs that uh, I did something wrong. And what I mean by that is I think that Mocha is too distracted. Um, too distract. I mean, she's a great mom. She lets them nurse. But she is not, she's a brand new mom and she's not as patient as um, she was with the twins. Like, I know these are four boys, but these are not persistent boys. Um, Clara's boys were very, very persistent and they would follow her everywhere. These boys get lost. And I think it's because they're just little. Yesterday, I, st I was hearing this one baby go cry. And it was like, it wasn't like, okay, I'm stuck in something and screaming. No, it was like this sad cry. And so I walk into the barn and I look and he was under, you know, the water bucket was hanging. And he was under it, looking at the wall, crying. And Mocha was kind of talking to him. She was outside, but she wasn't worried about him. So... That was one of the events that kind of made me think, okay, this is what we need to do, but hold on, there's more. Um, when I let them out, I always keep a good eye on the baby goats. Are they nursing? Is she paying attention? Is she waiting for them uh, so they can nurse for a little bit and then walk away? Are all of them doing that? Are all of them being persistent? You know, all those things that you're like, okay, is this happening? <laughs> and then... I've noticed that it's not happening. Like, the baby goats are playing and they seem healthy and they seem just fine, but they're not nursing as much as they should be nursing for the age that they are. And I know this because I've had baby goats before and you can tell that none of these four boys are doing the things that others have done before like being persistent with the teat and mocha is i mean everything is green grass is growing there are weeds everywhere the trees and everything she's just excited to go around her pen and eat and every time i hear a baby go crying they're like in one part of the pen and she's in another part of the pen this is the time where moms lay down and all the babies go around the mom and they sleep together. And more times than not, I find a baby by himself sleeping in a corner and then two other babies sleeping in another corner and then another one in another corner of the pen outside. And that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal to what I've experienced this far. Now, maybe it's normal for other people. Maybe people don't keep an, such a close eye on their moms and their baby goats. And that's okay. But for me, I know that something is wrong. So when I came at night, saw that little boy under the bucket, crying, looking to the wall, I touched his belly and his belly was not full. So, you know, he was eating fine. I, I took him to Mocha and he nursed he was interested he nursed it's not like he was sick or anything but she would walk away from him so i would follow with her baby trying to show him hey if she moves you just move with her and same thing she would walk away from him i've tried it with another baby girl i thought maybe she's rejecting this baby <sighs> same thing she's not interested in staying so they nurse now i also noticed that there are four boys and she is she has lots, lots, lots of milk she's not letting down. So I don't know if she is rejecting these kids without, you know, kind of um, being violent or, you know, just kind of pushing them aside or, you know, the kind of 
behavior that you expect when a mom rejects a baby. She headbutts the baby, she doesn't let it nurse, she doesn't let it get... And even though she does let them nurse, she doesn't let them nurse enough that they're okay. So if we go back to what I've been doing wrong, you can see that if I would have weighed them in the beginning, I would know how much they've been growing in the last 10 days. So, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. Too late, too little, too late. But the only solution that I can think of for this problem is this, because now I have a problem, okay? And I'm stressing over this problem, so I'm gonna try to find a solution. And the only solution that I think will work is if I keep mocha, inside the pen for most of the day like let her go out and maybe graze even maybe tether her outside to eat the fresh grass or leave her leave her in the pen if i'm not going to be around um, for three hours a day and then she needs to be inside with her babies now being inside in a stall with your babies mean that she is going to pay 100% of her attention to those babies because she does love them, she does want them, you know, she does want to be with them. She she does love them and she does, you know, she lets them nurse. But I don't think that she does it when she's outside. So my plan is to let her out either in the morning for a few hours or let her stay with her baby all morning and then around 5 p.m. take her out and let her eat outside graze and stuff for about two to three hours and that way I can give her a break from the babies. She can eat fresh grass which fills them a lot more than hay and you know it's going to strengthen the bond that I think it's kind of broken at this point she was very attached to her twins last year she was fighting for them she was always with them she even is always with them at this point but she's not as attached to these little boys so to give them the best chance that's what I'm gonna do now that doesn't mean that this, that's gonna work you know what I mean it's it doesn't mean that she's gonna be standing up she could lay down and not let them nurse but the second that she stands up, they're going to try to nurse. Now, how can I tell if that's going to work? It's the only way I know how to do it. And I think it's a genius idea. And I think I'm stupid for not doing it from the beginning. Me, myself, for my goals. Um, it's, I need to weigh them. So from now, that is Thursday, I'm going to start, is it today, the 28th? I think, I don't know, it's Thursday, I'm going to start to weigh them and record, have a record of how much they're growing so I can spot who's not having enough milk. If I have to pull one of them and bottle feed them, I will. I don't, I'm not scared of doing that. I think that that would be the best scenario for growing a healthy baby goat. Now, is it healthier to be with mom? In my opinion, it is. But if he's not getting enough nutrients because he's not being able to nurse enough, not because she doesn't have any milk, but because she's not being the best mom of quads. You have to understand this is the first time that she had quads. So from two now to four, it's a big difference. So if I have to do that, I'm going to do that. But it's, it's just one of those things that it's hard for me to take the loss, you know. Uh, for me, having to pull a baby from a mom is a loss, and it's not what I plan. And to me, it it makes me feel bad when that happens. Now, I know what I have to do. It's just that sometimes I'm scared that it's not going to work. I'm scared that I'm going to make things worse. I'm scared that I'm worrying over nothing. But in the end, I think if my gut is telling me, hey, something is not right then I have to figure out a way to make it right for me and for my goats. So, you know, despite the fact that these boys could be going as pets when they're leaving the farm, there's nothing better than having a great start in life. No matter if you're a human, if you're a goat, if you're a dog, whatever you are, a healthier start is the best. And I want them to be healthy. Now, I actually like when they go as pets. Because, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, you know, bugs stink. And they don't get the love that pets get. 
So I really, you know, I even though you can sell them for less money because they're just gonna be pets and blah 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 i just think that it's one of those things that it's the best outcome possible for little boys because you know that they're not gonna be stinky they're not going to be in a pen by themselves or with other goats because you know not many people want to spend time with stinky boys so there's a possibility they're just gonna go as pets and that they don't need the majestic buck structure or you know they don't need to be this certain weight or size in order to be whatever happens either if they're buckling or if they're pets their beginning of the life that that's the most important part to grow in my opinion a healthier goat that's what i've been told by one of the trusted vets i have and it's just overall this is the time that i need to worry about them to make sure that i give them the best chance in life and the best life possible so keeping an eye on the the weight and keeping them with mom it's going to be an experiment i'm going to share it with you i'm going to tell you what happened after that and that way hopefully i can learn a little bit of this experience that it's been very stressful really and do better next time that's all i can do do better next time and i thought that this information might be helpful for somebody out there again i know i am very obsessed with my goats and that I do pay a lot of attention to them that I do spend a lot of time with them and even as the numbers are growing I know their personalities I know what they do every day I know what they don't want to do every day and I kind of notice patterns and so to me it's easier to identify when something it's different I'm not saying it's not right but something is different with Mocha and her attachment to her babies and this is how I'm planning to fix it. So I hope that you enjoy this video and that if you have goats or if you have the knowledge or if you can share something with me that will help me in this transition, I totally would accept any kind of um, advice so please leave it in the comments down below. So if you're new around here, please remember to subscribe like the video and hit the notifications. I upload Monday through Fridays at 3 p.m. St not standard time, Pacific time, because we're in the West Coast. And um, I am on the chat, so if you want to talk to me while the video is being premiered, which is, you know, if it's a 15 minute video, it will be from 3 p.m. to 3.15. That's the time that I'm gonna be available in the live chat, so you can talk to me there. Also, remember to follow us on social media. We do have a Facebook page, that I'm trying to be on top of it. I have an Instagram and all that will be linked down below. You can follow me there if you want to see pictures and kind of Friday updates where I just do a little video or stories or something and share it on my stories on Instagram. I'd love for you to follow me there. And yeah, thanks so much for being here. Talk to you guys next time. Bye. Tell that you have something